Today on Dinty's Hideaway, we're going to take a look at the collector's market. What should you collect? What should you look for? How much should you pay? We'll tell you today on Dinty's Hideaway. Retro collecting, this is a new thing for most of us out there, and it's funny because the rise in retro computing is unprecedented. As people got older, they might buy a car that was popular around the time they learned to drive. They might get that really nice instrument they used to dream of having when they played in a high school band, or that guitar they couldn't afford until now. In the past, retro collectors had even uh, had names like audio files or shutterbugs, but these are a little different as those technologies develop much less dramatic fashion and they tend to blend the old with the new. With the Gen Xers, the car was the Apple II or the Commodore 64 for the most part. These cost almost as much as a car, uh, as, as did, did the previous generations, and, and that does bring back nostalgia, at least for me. So the computers that were piled up in e-waste a couple years ago are worth hundreds, even thousands today. To a new computer collector, I have some advice. As, as someone who's made a lot of mistakes over the years, collect the sweet spot, not what you know. A couple years ago, Commodore 64s and Apple IIs were worth far less than a good compact 286, a K-Pro, Osborne, or a host of other odd CPM machines. There's a lot more move. There's a movement to collect more history. I would say now we've evolved, or perhaps we've moved on to an experimental type of collecting. So the best-selling retro computer today, the Commodore 64, and the emerging computers, the Apple II and Macintosh SE line, already priced out of most people's budgets. In Europe, the Amiga 500 would replace both Apples on the list, and the Atari 16-bit machines would also be emerging favorites. And this happens too with cars. The best car to buy from a value standpoint would be what a 52-year-old would have collected, would have driven when he or she was 16. That could have been a 70s Mustang, a VW Scirocco, a Toyota Celica, or even an MGB or Mazda RX-7. The two cars are the cars they might have driven and the cars they wanted. This is generally also a middle-class collector, so Ferraris and DeLoreans would not be good value plays. Translate that to computer, and clearly there are a few machines that will emerge. A Sinclair Spectrum, Atari 800, Texas Instruments 994A, a Commodore 64, an Apple II, a Tandy 1000, an IBM PC Junior, and a TRS-80 color computer. So let's first look at what is not a bargain right now. Let's start with the, let's start with the top five don't buys. One. Post Redbox C64 and 128. Totally overpriced and super prone to failure. Because all of the support from the European markets, Commodores got away with bloody murder when it came to quality control and design. The Post Redbox machines were better, but expected to shell out $1,000 for 100% Cherry C64 128 rig. That is if you are planning to get a monitor in a 1541 disk drive. Number two, Commodore Amigas. All varieties, but especially the 500. These have been insanely high priced for years on the 600 and the 1000 up models, but even the 500s now sell for over $500. They were good, but the upgrade path is dicey at best. Plus, they are very fragile little machines and a nightmare for a collector. Stick with something a little hardier. 3. Apple IIs. For decades, these were so common, most people would leave them on the, cur on the curb like an old TV. While very hardy and easy to fix, Apple IIs are just becoming rare enough to now demand the price above thrift store level. But make no mistake, there are still a lot of them out there, and the collector's market is already becoming flooded. Remember, baby boomers have millions of these in attics just waiting to get listed on eBay, so they will come back down. Number 4. Color Computer 3. How a $169 computer that was a laughing stock by 1992, when it was finally retired, cost $600 today is beyond me. Now they are fairly rare, as most of the color computers were sold before the emergence of the $800 Tandy EX, or 1000 EX in 1987. After that, the price of the Coco took a nosedive, which kept supply artificially high. It's a great computer by 1981 standards, not 1992. Number 5, the Atari ST. I think the price run up of these machines is coming from the Amiga owners who have already gotten a couple of collectible computers and want to balance out the collection with the other computer they wanted, but that's the problem with the ST. It was always the other computer. It's not anywhere close to as good as the Amiga or the Mac SE30, but commands just as high a price. So now that you know not what not to buy, here's a list of what you should buy.
one, the Atari 600. A little elbow grease, you can beef that up to an 800. So long as you stay light on the peripherals, expect to pay between $70 and $200 for these. And $200 can get you new old stock, and there's still some of that around. The Timex Sinclair 1000 ZX81. Neither of these are great machines, but they cost almost nothing. Expect to pay $40 to $60, including the 16K RAM upgrade, and a couple of cassettes. It'll look good on the bookshelf for the cost of a couple books. TRS-80 Color Computer. Now these are the bargain of bargains. A lot of collectors don't know they went for six years with virtually no changes. Be sure you get the Model F motherboard. All socketed ICs and a snap to upgrade. Even with a floppy emulator, 64K of RAM, and a replacement CPU that would triple its speed, you can still get that Coco with a Coco SDC, one of the cheapest and best floppy emulators for under $200. There's no better computer ecosystem for a novice collector, and after 40 years, they all work, and I mean all of them. The Atari XE series. The Dark Horse on the list and pretty rare and much more popular in Europe. These are the last gas with the 800 series. Basically their version of the Commodore 128, but unlike the Commodore, the Atari works in a variety of easily supported video modes. Now these, like the Commodores, were buggy, you, but you can buy a whole new, never used replacement motherboard with all the chips on it for under $100 on eBay right now. With the whole thing coming in at $200, you've got practically new old stock, and there's a great emulator for those too. Stick with the 64K version if you can. It's easy to upgrade, and I, I know not one Atari 800 program who would ever address the extra memory. Oh, and here's the best part. They come in the Atari ST case, so your nearsighted friends will think you spent thousands. The number one top value for any collectible computer is the Texas Instruments TI-99-4A. Now I know about the Bill Cosby sponsorship thing and the scam 16-bit processor claim, but hey, not even Hitler could stop the Volkswagen Beetle. What you will get for is the best retro gaming in its class. Classics such as Parsec, Alpiners, Tunnels of Doom are hard to top, plus you get some of the guess, get best game ports you'll see. Qbert on the TI, for example, is impossible to distinguish from the arcade model. Plus, an amazing universe of crazy peripherals allow you to expand this system to ridiculous levels. 2.5 million were sold over a couple, court, a couple of short years, and many of the earlier models will come with speech synthesizers, floppy drives, and even an expansion box, which will allow you to take this to Amiga levels of power. Now, here's the best thing about these. A lot of old people think they are valuable and want $200 to $300. Don't even negotiate with them. It's like when they go to a record store and yell because the Johnny Mathis album is not worth the same as Led Zeppelin or Who. You won't be able to convince them, and don't worry about a monitor either. For $10 to $20, you can go on eBay and buy a cable that will work with almost anything. You can expect to pay between $15 and $50 for a machine, a cassette cable, probably a couple of games on a joystick. That's local prices, but even on eBay, you're, south, you're well south of $100. 